Hi, it's Mr. Wasserman, and today we're going to look at how to multiply uh, whole numbers by mixed numbers. We're in our math journals on pages 240 and 241, so let's just jump right into it. Uh, solving number stories is our title, so we're going to take a look at the first number story. Each member of the flute section of the Briar Woods Elementary School Band practiced for two hours and three-fifths hours last week. There are five flute players. What is the total number of hours they practiced? Okay, we're going to use a little ruckus here to help us solve this number story. Ruckus, of course, as you know, say it with me. Read multiple times. Underline the question. Circle important information. Come up with an action plan and then solve. So, of course, we're going to reread the problem and then take a look at uh, what are the questions because there's lots of steps for number one. So, each member of the flute section of the Briarwood Elementary School band practiced for two and three fifths hours. Let's circle that piece of information. And there are five flute players. What is the total number of hours they practiced? Well, as I hinted in the introduction, this is multiplication of whole numbers and mixed numbers. So this is going to be a multiplication problem. So let's create a number model. So I'm going to multiply the number of hours practiced, which is two and three-fifths hours, times the number of flute players, which is five, and we'll make our unknown be F for flute playing. So two and three-fifths times five. So the first thing they ask us to do after creating the number model is to show two different ways to solve the number story. Well, as you know, multiplication is repeated addition, so I could set this up as an addition problem. Now, what am I adding together? Well, two and three-fifths to itself five times. Now, two and three-fifths is a mixed number, and a mixed number is basically a number with two place values. Uh, but one of the place values is a part of a whole. That's the fractional part. So to help us line up our place values, I'm going to write this repeated addition problem vertically so you can see the columns. So I'm going to write two and three-fifths, and then I'm going to write it again, two and three-fifths, and then again, two and three-fifths, two and three-fifths, one more time, two and three-fifths. So I'm going to add all those things together. Now whenever I'm approaching a, an addition problem that has multiple place values, I'm going to start with the smallest place value first, and that would be my fractions right here, a column of three-fifths. Now remember, when I am adding fractions, I am only adding the numerator to itself. The denominator does not change. The denominator is basically telling me what the numerator represents. So it could be bananas, it could be Lego bricks, it could be whatever. It just so happens that what we're adding is three-fifths. So there are three of them, and they're each fifths. So I'm going to add three plus three plus three plus three plus three, or five groups of three together. Well, I'm going to use a multiplication hack, and since I know that three times five is 15, I'm just going to write down 15 fifths down here. 15 is the number in my numerator, and my denominator stays the same. Now, of course, when I add my whole numbers, my whole digits, they're just twos, and there's five of them, and five times two, of course, is going to give me 10. So my answer right now is 10 and 15 fifths. Now, 15 fifths, well, of course, that is an improper fraction, and I cannot pair an improper fraction with a whole number. So I've got to change this improper fraction to either a whole number or a mixed number. 15 fifths. So what I need to do now is ask myself, how many groups of 5 can I get out of 15? Well, again, knowledge of my multiplication and the correlating division facts tells me that, well, I can get 3 groups of 5 out of 15 because 5 times 3 
is 15. So basically, 15 fifths is another way of saying 3. So, my answer is basically 10 and 3. And what is 10 plus 3, everybody? Yes, that's right, it's 13. Okay, so that's one way I can approach this problem, repeated addition. But we're talking multiplication here because this is the, the, the crux of the uh, lesson. So we're going to do another way. So our first way of showing it is over here. Now I'm going to demonstrate multiplication. So I'm just going to use my algorithm that I already set up, my number model in A, okay? But again, I'm going to think uh, in terms of place value. So I'm going to use partitioning rectangles. Now this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to recognize that 2 and 3 fifths is basically saying that I have 2 holes and 3 fifths. And I'm going to multiply each of those place values by 5. Now if I multiply 5 times 2, I get 10. And if I multiply 5 times 3, I get 15. So 5 times 3 fifths is going to give me 15 fifths. And there we have our partial products. We have 10 and we have 15 fifths, just like we did over here. So our answer is 13 hours. Now wait a minute, there's more to this problem. For some reason, they want to know how many minutes that represents. Well, if I know that there are 60 minutes in one hour, I need to multiply the number of hours by 60. So 60 times 13. Now this time I'm going to approach it partial product style. Let's make that a little bit smaller, shall we? 60 times 13 is basically 60 times 10 and 60 times 3. Well, I know that 6 times 1 is 6, so 6 with a 0 behind it times 1 with a 0 behind it is going to give me 6 with 1, 2, 0, it's otherwise known as 600. And of course, 60 times 3 is just like 6 times 3 with a 0 behind it. 6 times 3, of course, is 18. Add that extra 0. And that gives me a total of 780 minutes. So I'm going to take that number, put it up here, 780 minutes. Now, I need to know how many seconds that is. Well, I know that there are... 60 seconds for every minute, just like there are 60 minutes in an hour. So now I'm going to look at my number 780, that's my number of minutes, and I'm going to multiply that by 60. So here we go. 780 times 60. Whew. That's a couple of big numbers right there. But remember, these zeros are just place value holders, so really all we're doing is we we're multiplying 78 times 6, and then we're just going to throw in the zeros at the end. Let's do that. Well, let's do that uh, partitioning rectangle style again. This time I'm going to have six boxes because 780 is 780 and 0. And 60 is 6 tens and no zeros. Well, I know that everything multiplied by zero is going to give me zero as an answer. So really, I can just ignore that whole row. So I'm just going to be multiplying everything times 60. All right. 7 times 6, that gives me 42. 7 times 6 with 1, 2, 3 zeros is going to give me 42,000. 6 times 8 is 48. 6 with 1 zero times 8 with 1 zero is going to give me 48 with two zeros, or 4,800. Then, of course, anything times zero is going to be zero, so 60 times zero is going to give me a great big goose egg. So really all I have to do is I need to uh, now add my two partial products, which is 42,000 
or 42 with 1, 2, 3 zeros, and 48, which is 4,800. And then I'm just going to add my zeros, add 0 to 8, add 2 plus 4, that gives me 6. And so my total is 46,800. And that is how I figure out the number of seconds that flute players were practicing their flutes. That's a lot of seconds. Okay, and that's basically how we approach multiplication with larger numbers and multiplication with mixed numbers. Let's try one more. Let's look at this one right here. 2 times 7 and 7 tenths. So this time I'm just going to approach it multiplication style. And again, I'm going to use my partitioning rectangle strategy. 7 and 7 tenths is 7 and 7 tenths multiplied by 2. Well, 2 times 7 is 14. 2 times 7 tenths is going to give me 14 tenths. So right now my answer is 14 and 14 tenths. Well, again, 14 tenths. That is an improper fraction. But you could probably already see how I would convert that into a mixed number. 14 tenths. Now I'm thinking dimes. A tenth of a dollar is a dime. So if I have 14 dimes, that's a dollar and 40 cents. Or one dollar and four tenths. So really, what I need to do is I'm just going to convert 14 tenths. I'm using a little uh, mental math here to one and four tenths. I'm going to add it to my 14 from over here. And of course, 14 plus one is 15. That leaves me with the four tenths, the fractional part. So that is my answer. Lots to think about, lots of steps, but if you break anything down into its individual steps, you can uh, chip away at the problem until you're done. Of course, if you have questions or concerns, please email or contact your teacher. Otherwise, have a good afternoon, and we will talk again tomorrow.